Hey guys, this is Daniel and welcome back to another quick video on one of my most recent character projects. What you can see here is a character that you might already know from the most, well, the, the last video that I published. Uh, if you remember it, it was about modeling the hair and this is basically the result from the last, the previous video. Um, and of course, those of you who support me on Patreon definitely know her because of the many work in progress screenshots that I posted over there. So if anyone else is interested, feel free to check out uh, my Patreon page. The link is of course in the description below. However, for this video, I actually wanted to show you the many interesting techniques and details that I can point out uh, with this character. And because there are so many, let's get started right away. First of all, I want to quickly give you a look at the character design that I had at the very beginning. There's actually a bigger story and a project behind the character, but I don't want to talk about that at the moment because there is still a lot of work to be done and it's still not ready for presentation. However, there are interesting things about the character. Well, generally speaking, it is a rigged character, not everything is rigged yet, the face for example and the skirt and and some, some areas are still to be done, but probably the most interesting part of this rig is that it actually has physics for the hair. Let me give you a look at that, I will simplify the geometry so that it runs fluent, uh, so the frame rate isn't too low. And you can see that the hair actually moves with gravity and with the dynamic of the head and it's stable as well. So this is something that is very interesting to many people because you know how you sometimes try to use close simulation on the hair? That's not a good idea if you want to have a stable simulation. Anyways, let's take a quick look at how I made that possible. Here is the basically the whole setup with the armature and the rigid bodies that I'm using in the background. So the hair is rigged first of all. I'll show you quickly the weights. Um, here, here you have them. There's just a simple gradient on that and there are techniques to draw that quickly but because I plan to create a video on this um, in the near future I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So once you have that rigged to one or two bones or maybe a chain of bones for the back of the hair as I'm going to do it later you can actually control them, which is already pretty good. So if I get the right object there, I can control it and it looks pretty good. But we want to simulate that. So what I'm doing here is I have a collision, a simplified collision object for the head. And I have a couple of rigid bodies here and here that simulate just this object with a certain mass hanging around on this well point constraint more or less and this applied to the armature basically gives you these pretty good simulations you can also restrict the angles you know to 45 degrees maybe so that you won't get crazy results and also to um, improve the stability and there is one more thing that is really really cool um, when you rig the object you have the armature modifier, of course, and one of the things that happens when you don't have a whole chain of bones, but maybe just one, is you lose volume. And this preserve volume feature on the armature modifier actually really works well in this situation. I just thought I would point that out because that was really um, a big thing to make this look so good. For example, if you turn the character upside down, the characters would look, the, the hair would look awful if you wouldn't have this feature selected. So that was one pretty cool thing. Now the second uh, feature that I want to present is actually about modeling. And it's not really a feature, it's, it's just an advice on, on one particular area and how to model it. Because there is, it's so much easier when you do it the right way. I'm talking about the, the frills on, on grasses. You often have them with these characters and sometimes they can appear to be quite difficult to, to mold them because they have so many so much up and down. Of course it's not difficult but it's maybe just it just consumes a lot of time and there is a better way to do it. So 
let me quickly select just a circle here and I'll copy that and quickly create just a, you know this cylindrical shape very smooth and no details at all at this point so how can you turn that easily into frills first of all make sure that you have a resolution similar to just imagine one one loop here is one wave and now select this entire part and use the subdivide feature and okay the feature wait let me undo that quickly all right now this is what happens when you subdivide it i had some uh, settings in here that weren't default so i just quickly reverse them now look at the smoothness value when you set that to one you get a smoother result which is what this feature is used for but it allows you to set a higher value so for example set it to five and look at this you get perfect waves so what what else would you want to have <laughs> it's very easy to use and i really enjoyed using it for this character and here we go basically that's all you have to do to get very even wa waves throughout uh, such an object I thought that was very neat to that you're able to use some of the features for very different tasks so I wanted to point it out and finally I think one more interesting thing that I can talk about is the material itself because I have a very interesting mixture between uh, textures and shading of course I have let me quickly switch to my cloth texture uh, I have well of course I should select the cloth object maybe as well I have a texture here that just adds detail it's not the greatest and I still want to work on it but here you go this is where you just place your details but if you look at the way the light interacts with it it's very interesting because you have not only a hard edge you also have a soft edge around that and the way I am doing is doing this is by using the, the, the material nodes actually I want to show you the cloth itself this one here so I have a white material that it, that is converted with the color ramp into the, the kind of shading that I want this one here creates my hard shaded version this one here is the soft shaded version with the with the gradient around the area that I'm, um, where the you know the threshold is, and I multiply that to my texture, which means that wherever there is a shadow, it is a dark version of my texture. Basically, when I paint the texture, I make it so that this is what it will look like when the character is bright, and then my material creates a, a darker version of it. Um, this is of course then mixed together evenly or you can control that however you want it to have and this gives you a um, pretty good material um, I worked on this quite often and it's not too easy to get that right but as you can see even though it's quite a simple solution it works very good for here also as for the rendering I use over here ambient occlusion and indirect lightning with the approximate um, mode and that also adds a bit to it when you render it but these are some render settings that I just wanted to mention but I still want to work on so that's um, where I'm going to leave it at so upcoming features are going to be the to rig the face to finish you know simulating the hair to create simulation for the, the skirt and I also want to make sure that it works with with motion capture recordings which would be very exciting to actually see the character really done and and ready for for all kinds of motions and and actions I'm I personally am very excited for the progress and by the way I have to mention this <laughs> you will be able to download the character if you support me on Patreon because I'm publishing my 3D models over there from now on so again I would be very glad if you would take a look at that page 
it is in the description of course so that's all I want to say in this video I hope you learned something there were some interesting things here and there and if you have more questions leave them in the comments I will try to answer them all right thank you so much for watching today again and I'll see you in my next video have a good day